Hello everybody, welcome to another Five Idiots episode. We're continuing on from the, the Ballad of Flagel Snap. We've got Dimitriov here, uh, Dimmy G with Jack Bull, and so there you go. Take it away, Jets. Yeah, hello, hello. I'm Dimmy G, Dimitriov, the fighter, the axe man, uh, the carrier. <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a war warrior, fighter, dude with an axe and I've got some uh, throwing axes as well. Happy days. Well, you had some throwing axes. I did, yeah. I lobbed one at a demon, whatever it was. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, sad times. So the Ballad of Dimitriov. We, we, we've ended the Ballad of Daedal. I'm sorry, Flargo Snarf. Now we're into the Ballad of Dimitriov. Uh, this is uh, the Book of Dimitriov, Chapter 2, right? Chapter 2. So, um... When we talked, when I talked to Dato a little bit, I asked him uh, in regards to Florida Snarp, and I'm going to ask you the same things. So, what were what were Dimitriev's immediate thoughts? So you 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 left Night Demon's um, uh, person behind, right? And you went through the the columns, if you remember on the map, right? And you walked into the first main hallway. Once you go, what? what 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 was what were Dimitriov's thoughts at that point? Where does it go from there? What obviously you guys probably aren't standing there to have a full blown conversation, but something's got to be going on in his mind. Um, like how the hell do we defeat him? Like he just seemed like really powerful, like powerful beyond anything I've ever seen before, and obviously um, been involved in a lot of war and all that sort of thing, and then throwing the axe at him, and then him just going. <laughs> and blowing up uh, Molaran or whatever his name was. Molaran, um, come on, man, get, get into Indiana Jones. <clears throat> yeah, bah. but yeah, I was just, I was completely blown away, um, and I just, yeah, I was just like, oh my god, like how the hell? Because I, it, I want to like defeat him. Do you know what I mean? I want to like, but he's a, he's a god and he's an old god and he's pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, because most of the time Dimitrov has dealt with you know, foes, you know, you're, you're, you're on a battlefield, you're, um, you're fighting on horseback. It's, 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 it really, uh, you know, obviously you've never ridden out to take on a God it, it is part of your unit, right? You were, you were taking on other men. You were taking on in some cases, goblins, in some cases, you know, bears or whatever may have been, you know, threatening the area at that time. Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's just like, I was just, a bit bowled over by how powerful he is and obviously he doesn't doesn't come across as a friendly guy if he's making uh, the nom uh, make a decision on which daughter to kill you know and like I kind of feel responsible for like the manor and Elon and um, like I guess the daughters are a part of that if that makes sense so no, that, that <clears throat> definitely makes sense because it, and that was going to be I didn't really ask Flargle that because I don't think the way he plays his character and I love it. I'm not, this is not a knock in any way. I think the way he plays his character is friggin' brilliant, right? Because he's developed a character that doesn't trust anybody or anything. Yep. Right. Like every, like we were talking, right. Who put you here, right? The guys in the cages. Oh right? my who put God. You, here? <laughs> you know, why are you yeah. here? Were you on trial? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the cultist, right. And it's and and it was it was an honest question. It wasn't because Dado's mind wasn't. Hey, these guys were captured. Dado's mind is, well, if the cultists captured these guys, what did they have to do to get put? You know what I mean? It was like yeah, yeah. It was very interesting. So it's not often you find someone in a cage that didn't deserve to be there. Yeah, there you go. Um, so that was the that was a question I was actually going to leave for you, Elliot and Doc. Is what do you make of the daughters? Because you've lost both the sons, right? Now they're cousins. They're not Laura Tillich's sons. They were her yeah. nephews. Okay. And then three these three girls you know to be her daughters. So you got five cousins, two of which are dead. Yep. And is this so is this almost like a means of redemption? A potential means for redemption, I should say? Yeah, I, I guess. But I mean, ultimately, the goal was to find out what was going on at the manor. Like, um, obviously, there's some sort of weird thing going on in the case of, like, the disappearances and all that sort of thing. Um, 
And I know a lot of that is around whether one of the relations is in the manor at the time, because obviously the manor was like vacated and it all sort of stopped and whatever. But like, I just want to get to the bottom of like solving it, and I feel like they should obviously have the manor. Like they're the they're the heirs, right? They're the ones that uh, probably the ones that should inherit it or something, and just sort of restore it to its former greatness as a town or whatever you know yeah no that that, that makes a lot of sense and um, and then you 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 uh you kind of reflect it on the knob a little bit and him making having to make a decision or potentially have to make a decision you've now put it off for quote unquote 10 days yeah well that's that's the thing right is the decision that uh night demon was making earlier make makes me realize that this this god the god isn't a good guy do you know what i mean he's not like a good person or a good like his intentions are not good <laughs> basically well, well, but that's all relative isn't it so well, like when elliot so elliot brought up a great example i'm sorry a great um a great point of his ant farm well when we like if you go in your backyard there dimmy in real life and there's ants and they're coming in the house what do you do to them Oh, you put a load of powder down, and then they uh, they get killed, don't they? Yeah, and so it is. So, like you said, he's not a good guy. But is that relative, or is he not a good guy? But if I was an ant going into a house, and someone poured a load of powder over me, and I died, I would think the person who poured a load of powder over me was not a good guy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's relative, right? So you're right. Yeah. From your perspective, it's like, dude, this guy's a prick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This yeah. guy is a prick. But from his perspective, you know, you know, and Elliot, he never directly called you ants. He did use it as an analogy, saying, "Well, what about these ants?" Right. But he never said like, "Oh, I view you as ants." But there's there's no reason for one of these daughters to die. Like, these daughters aren't invading his house or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're not like. It's, what have they done to him to make him want to kill one? Do you know what I mean? It's like this. We don't know why he wants to kill one, and he wasn't very like he just made it sound like he was bored and he was just having fun, like you know. So <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. And I think that's the way that Elliot was looking at it, and he was trying to like figure out how you know what's the out. And he kept talking about there's got to be a this has got to be a, a trick or a, a trap riddle, or a, yeah, yeah. a puzzle. And then what's the out? What's the out? What's the out? So. When you're walking, when when the five of you are, are exiting the catacombs into the upper levels, right? So you're 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 past all of the the combat, but you're still you're still taken aback, right? You're still somewhat silent as you're leaving. You're on guard as you're leaving, obviously. And then you make it back to the manor. Um, you you remember that you left the minute. I'm sorry, the manservants back at the rowdy gnome. You know, under um, Elliot had asked. Um, uh, the purveyor of the rowdy gnome to, to care for them while he was gone. And um, you had left uh, Faps's body back in Victor. You had taken it back there um, with you all when you had at, when you had um, said that everybody should be vacating, right? Yeah. So when you get back to above ground, if you will, you don't necessarily have to go to the manor. What, what, would, what would Dimitriev want to do at that point? I mean, you feel safe. You feel, you know, you're... You didn't encounter any other cultists coming back up the catacombs. You're, you know, Molaram is 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 a is is a splatter on the ground of, of history now. So I mean, that's the thing is like uh, they said that Faps wanted to be put to rest where he fell or something like that is what they said. So yeah, that's what Elon would have said if you asked him again. He would have said that you know any warrior who doesn't have direct family to return to would 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 want to or if you weren't able to would want to you know fight where he or would want to uh be buried while he where he fell well they consider this his home now right because they'd come and taken it over yeah and his brother had we assume his brother's dead when I mean, we were like 99.95 percent sure his brother's dead there too right we just yeah. have no body because it was probably consumed yeah there is that so I mean that would be like my my first thing is just to sort out like faps. I mean I don't know <clears throat> what all the servants and stuff want to do 
like I guess we have to resolve the thing with the daughters first and see where they want to go if like if I mean I'm at the point where I'm assuming two of them are going to make it <laughs> so, well now he said so he said we're going to kill one I'll keep one, one and, yeah. and, keep, and he's going to keep one so yeah so I'm assuming the one that that was freed would be returning to the mansion and that would be theirs. That's what I'm assuming, so... I guess that solves that. Um, and then... <clears throat> yeah, so like, just... Obviously I want to sort out FAPS if I, ca uh, if I can. Like, if I can't until this other stuff is settled, then I want to go and get me other Hancock. I'd love to get both of them, but you know. Um, I want to get me weapon back that I gave to the tree. So, um, so then, and, and I asked this, so you're going to travel, right? It takes you a day and a half to get back to Victor, right? Right. Um, as, as we mentioned, right, it's a half day's journey back to the, uh, back to the crossroads. You just camp there. You take the extra time because you know it's the best place to camp and about a day's journey back from there, back down into Victor. So we're a day and a half in of this 10 days of, um, uh, let's see of the uh of the uh, countdown if you will right um in speaking to flargal snarp he he said that his conversation i i asked him first because flargal snarp he is very opinionated right yeah he, he has a very specific feeling on everything right and i don't want to do that that guy should be in prison kill them you know what i mean yeah. Um, so I, that's why I wanted to kind of ask him first, because I figured he would ask, or he would actually probably be the first one to start the conversation about Night Demon somewhere along the road. Right? Because most of you coming out, or all of you, in fact, coming out of there, you just met an old god, right? Yeah. And you're probably not just going to walk out of there talking about it flippant, right? Because religion, uh, even loosely, if, even if you're unaffiliated, you know that we don't mess with religion, right? You say the wrong thing, a god can appear. You say the right thing, you know, like uh, like when Elliot was praying, uh, what, like some five, six, seven episodes ago, when he got all of his spell slots back and his god intervened, right? So we we don't take them lightly, even if we don't necessarily owe fealty to them. So what what would have what would have been yours if if and Flargal's, um interactions would have been along the lines of listen we've got to figure out how to get out from underneath this guy's thumb we don't want anything to do with this guy we don't want to make this decision we don't want elliot to make this decision we don't want to owe him anything we don't need another leash around our neck yeah i what mean would, what, what would, what's dimitriov's um, viewpoint of the situation well, like in my head, he's a bad guy and he needs to be defeated. That's that's the thing. Is like I say, when when he came up with the ultimatum for the daughters, like obviously I want to get all three of them back and save them, right? But at the same time, I'm just completely overwhelmed by how powerful he is, and I don't see us having a chance of doing it. So. Again, like that was my reasoning at the time was that like in war you've got to kill a few hundred people to save a thousand, right? Like that's the that's the cost of war, right? So <clears throat> the way I see it is if we have to lose two daughters, at least we've saved one, you know? <laughs> like at least yeah. there's there's something out of the 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 journey that we've been on. And like I, I just don't see a way of defeating him. And I mean what's the alternative if he if if he doesn't pick one, what happens? Like, then everyone dies or what? Like, it doesn't... It's not really clear enough in my mind what the alternative is, you know? So does Dimitriov have any type of uh, a hidden fear of some kind that if you guys don't go back in 10 days, what could happen? Or if you just refuse to make the decision, what could happen? Well, my... Like, if, if we... Like, if we don't make a decision, or we don't come up with an alternative, like, I'm assuming that they all die, you know? Because, like, why, he's not just, what What happens if we don't turn up? I'm, I'm under the impression that he'll just go, oh, screw those. Like, I'll just do what I was 
originally going to intend to do in the first place. The only reason he offered the daughter, wasn't it, was because of Elliot's analogy. So. <laughs> it's because of Elliot's analogy. Yeah, <laughs> you're, like... you're blaming Elliot. <laughs> I like the. I, I mean, to be fair, I see it as, <laughs> it's, it's his decision, you know. So I wow. mean, it, well, it is like I, I don't know, because like, it's it's really really hard. It's, I'm I'm pretty torn up about it, because like I say, I just want the mansion to be, like, I just wanted to complete the quest, right? And at the moment, Faps and Finches is dead. We've got no idea what's going on with this blood berm and stuff like and uh like we, we i don't know if like is that the end of it do you know what i mean because um motoran is dead does that mean these blood worms are just not going to be there anymore or it's like it's hard to know really like, i don't think we kind of understand what's happened yet and what's going to happen you know well, and then there's also just the the cleanup of what happens to that to the catacombs into that ancient temple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like we need to get someone who knows more about this sort of thing here to sort of tell us what it is and tell us what to do with it. You know, like. It's above my pay grade <laughs> to know what to do with those catacombs and stuff, but we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again, right? We need to make sure that whatever um, brought the blood worms out, whether it's Moloran or what, we, we need to make sure that it's not possible for it to happen again. So would you have had, how would you have approached Elon during this whole thing afterwards, obviously? So we, we, I talked to Dadle just a little bit about it because he wouldn't have any real interaction with him, but I wanted to give him his mindset. And I said, hey, you know, once, once you kind of dust off the jerkins, once you're on the road for a day, you've had some water out of the water skins, you've had a good meal, uh, the, the adrenaline is really coming, right? It's a, it's a day after the major, I mean, you guys had several days of fighting, right? With a, with a two day journey back to Victa in there, your body's feeling it, right? You've got some muscles that are sore. You've got some bruises, maybe a, a, a deep bone, bone bruise or two, you know, Elliot's healed you sometimes, sometimes you've used potions for that, but you're still, it's not that you're, you know, you, you still have, you, you have some signs of, of, of scarring, not physical but you know from combat it just happens and a day or so out you start to feel this and everybody starts to exhale and you're a day away from the night demon and elon looks very crestfallen right he's he's lost both of his masters specifically faps he lost his other um compatriot with him down there um he, and he's almost, I mean, he looked to you for guidance, but now that the fighting is over, theoretically, he's a lost man. You know, so what What? what are your interactions with Elon like? Oh, man. I Like, I just probably, I would say to him that, like, I mean, he's done everything that he, he could do to try and, like, like, um, sort of put it straighter in his head you know like try and solve it for, for him mentally by just saying like because we did everything we could do <clears throat> he died basically trying to find his brother and stuff like it, was, it wasn't like a a bad death you know what i mean it was like a a noble death fighting against the enemy um i mean i'd probably want to try and gauge like what his feelings are because I'm not really gonna tell him what to do and stuff, you know, like uh, it, it is kind of his decision on what he wants to do, you know, so um, Like he doesn't owe me anything if that makes sense, Like, no, it does it totally does Yeah, so you're coming. So we'll say that um, that you're approaching victim, right? Maybe you're an hour or so out and He knows this road they've they've traveled it back and forth when he was with faps before you ever met them and he knows where you're at and Maybe you can see some plumes of smoke ahead coming from a couple of chimneys from, from uh, you know the rowdy gnome or the quad skull where they're cooking up some some fantastic food or, 
you know, maybe the Black Garden. And, um, you know, you, you, you're coming back into into civilized, tremendously civilized area, right? Not that this is overrun with craziness, but you know what I mean. You're seeing yeah. the end of the road is in sight. And Elon kind of looks over to you and he's he's left you alone a little bit, right? You've had some small conversation, but he's kind of left you alone because, you know, as I mentioned, he is a he is a lost man. And 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 he says what what happened when your commanding officer fell in battle? What happened to you? What was the process? Where did what did they do with you? Uh well, they, they just, like, it's an assumed role, right? So, you know the sort of chain of command and you, you just follow it. So, when <clears throat> when he fell, it's you just, you moved, you, like, everyone knew their place and everyone knew, like, who was in charge, you know? So, it was, it was I mean, you just have to follow the, the lines of what, they would want to do right so <clears throat> you assume their role so i would say to elon um what would what would faps have done what would he want you to be doing if he was still here well what i mean though is there is no chain of command he was it what 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 happens when you lose your commanding officer and there's nobody above him or her well i mean then that becomes it becomes yourself right you, you are you are the commanding officer like don't you have to like take the lead you have to make your own decisions you have to um, but but did did they transfer you did they did they assign you somewhere what what so this is this is a person that you're starting to put together has only ever served under faps right and while there were people above faps Faps never fell before today, obviously, or yesterday, obviously. Right. So it's, I mean, when I, because we we were always in like a like a kind of like regiment, I guess you call it a regiment. But <clears throat> if if the commanding leader falls, like there there is a set chain. So where you're coming from is a little different because obviously you. you you just serve in the same guy like we we were sent on like my orders came from elsewhere i was never the one in charge as such you know so i was designated my orders and then obviously my job is to carry them out obviously faps is the one designating your orders so <clears throat> with with there not being anyone else there you know there's there's no one else to sort of take over or what have you so it's a little bit different like because if i was to be if i was to fall in battle then they they knew the guy that it was going to move to you know but what a, this is a, this is a this is a nightmare we assumed would never come but always knew would i mean like <clears throat> It's, it's it's down to you really like what do you want to do do you want to do you want to protect the mansion do you want to stay at the mansion and protect the mansion if we can get one of the daughters back um you can be like the main sort of guards like in charge of that i mean at the end of the day that i think what would faps have wanted for you or i mean or it's you you come with us you know like or you can go be a fisherman in a village you know i i went and Fell trees. I, I went and uh, became a woodsman and cut down trees for years. You know, <laughs> it's something. It's you know, you know you, and you know what you need to do, right? It's uh... so the minute that you mentioned like the sisters, right? His eyes perk up a little bit, like, oh shit, that's right, the sis, right? Because he's still kind of buried. He's he's almost. It's almost a. a, a it's almost an embarrassed look. Because he was so concerned about himself and what his future was that there are still family members alive, right? And he looks over to you and he says, we always thought that the sisters had moved on with their father somewhere else. We never knew that they were tied up in this. 
Faps would have never allowed it. Yeah. Well, not only would he have never allowed it, he would have never stopped searching for them. And now that I know that they're alive. Oh, does, does he know about the ultimatum? Do you know about what the old god said? That he yeah, was... Elon was there with you. And and what? How do you feel about that? And what do you? Well, I mean, I had never met the sisters before, but I would assume that 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 my place is is with them now. I don't I don't know if that's true. I, as you mentioned, you don't know if they would have me or not. And we don't even know if that's really them. We don't know what we're dealing with here. But I would assume that, as you just said. If my commanding officer fell, and if Faps's whole goal was to protect his family members, and I was next in line for that command, then I would assume that would be my orders. I mean, that's what I would assume as well. So, do you um, did um, Faps ever mention his cousins, like these daughters? Did, did... He did. He, he mentioned that that they thought that that that. The, the 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 story was that Benton and Laura had a falling out over something, who knows, over money or over the stress of running the manor or whatever happens to individuals who have something as big as this and just can't figure out a way to work it out any longer. And he and the daughters left and went south because they all just it was it was a rather swift event. Almost as if they had packed up and moved on one 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 day or one night or whenever they decided to. I don't want to make it sound like they disappeared, but now seeing what I've seen, I mean, do you know were were they seen like leaving, or did you just assume that they left? That's the thing, isn't it? So if they well, actually, the, the, that's just what I heard from Faps. I I know nothing yeah. of them. I'd never met them. He had just. When we had talked about why we were coming down here, and of course we had conversations regarding um, what was going on, it was thought that they had left to the to the coastal town of Quentin. That's where um, Benton had some family, but unless he left without them, I could not, from my understanding from Faps, I could never see him leaving without his daughters. He probably, I've got to assume he wouldn't leave without them. That's why we all assume that they left with him and that Laura refused to go and stayed behind so I guess we got to ask the Night Demon what happened to the father then, I guess. Um, I mean, that's the other thing as well, is like, what do you think about the whole situation of picking one of the daughters to survive and letting him take one and one of them dying? Like, what? Well, I don't know what the goblin word for prick is, but I'll bet you that was said several times. Yeah. And I'm in a, and, and and his his jaw kind of steals a little bit, right? And he goes, and I'm in firm firm agreement with that. Yeah. I mean, what kind of an asshole makes you choose which one of them you're going to kill, and you don't even know them? There's no, I just can't think of any alternative. To be honest, I cannot think of an alternative. And uh, surely letting one survive is better than letting all three of them potentially die, or you know. One always weighs one versus the other, but I have no idea how the Nam is going to make his choice on this one. And is it really his choice or is it all of our choices? I didn't understand that. Are we allowed to help him make this choice? or He can't I mean, possibly bear this burden alone. <clears throat> That's true. That is true. But, I mean, like... I think Flagel made it pretty clear that he's not interested... Daka, I think Daka's very much more about like money and you know self progression. I don't. I think he's a, probably a bit more like what's it got to do with us kind of mentality about it. And then obviously Eliod has his ties to his god and his way of being and living and stuff. I mean. The only thing I'm feeling is I'm just disappointed that I'm not strong enough to be able to defeat him myself. You know, like to like that would be my first point of call on how to solve it is to 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 kill the night demon. But that's not going to happen, is it? So I guess I guess whatever Elliot decides is what I will 
sort of agreed to follow, you know. What are we going to do with the manservants? We still have those seven people to think about. Well, they they're gonna they're gonna be with the daughter, right? So whichever daughter we sub, we keep, I'm assuming that they're gonna move into the mansion. The servants are gonna be there for that daughter, um, and then obviously yourself, you can protect the daughter for the rest of your days. You know, but that's that's how I see the solution. But then, if anyone wants to go above and beyond and figure out a way to get all three back, then I'm happy to help. But I don't see a I don't see a way myself personally. Like the, the guy is just too powerful, right? It's, uh... And then I want to move on and find out I, I just want to make sure that this doesn't repeat itself like obviously the the whole thing with the mansion is the disappearances happened it did stop for some time but then they started happening again right as soon as there's a tillock or in the mansion so <clears throat> once the daughter comes back is that gonna tee off something else to make it start all over again you know so do you even think that she would want to inhabit that place now knowing what we know about that location i don't know we didn't we didn't speak to him did we so and obviously there's three like we don't know which one's potentially going to come back either so <clears throat> i mean at the end of the day it's it's their like inheritance right it's theirs to it's it's theirs to choose what to do with right so whatever they choose to do is fine like with me it's it's just like it's if they if they want to stay great if they don't want to stay I, I can understand it and obviously if they don't want to stay then they can decide what they want to do with it you know fair enough i, I mean we can't answer that question until it comes to it i just yeah there's a, a week ago it was a much simpler world Oh yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <clears throat> but that's life, right? That's life. Every now and then, stuff happens, and then you got to start again, or you got to reset, and you got to like you just you've got to keep moving, right? You got to keep moving. So that's the thing. So. He kind of he kind of takes all of that in, right? And you you're still walking towards Victor. Are you are you are you going back? To the catacombs. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I I fully intend to go back in the ten days and resolve it. Right. That's. I didn't think it was an option to not go back. You know. So. I didn't. I didn't see it in my head as an option, right? I, the way I see it is, if we're gonna, if we're only gonna save one daughter, we're saving one daughter, right? And if we're not gonna lose all three, you know, like I owe it to perhaps as well myself to make sure somebody survives, right? Well, until we figure this whole thing out, I choose to journey with you if you will have me. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, absolutely. I don't. I, it'd be an honor to have you with us. So. So when you say that to him, he just his shoulders get a little bit larger, right? He, he kind of stands slightly taller. It's not like he was totally, you know, down in the dumps. I mean, he was he was bad, but he was doing a very good soldierly job. Of he's lost friends. He's lost compatriots, but he'd never, you know, he'd been with FAPS for, for many years, right? Yeah. Both in the field and in private employ. And um, and now he feels as you can kind of tell, I mean, you're 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 you gotta tread lightly here, right? Because he's looking for somebody to, to hitch his wagon to because his his team of prized horses just fell, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so you know that, that, that these are dangerous times for him because you've seen great officers go bad when they're put under the control of, a, of another bad officer after a great officer fell, that type of a deal. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Right. Um, so this also steals you a little bit because you, you, you feel him to be an honorable man. You know, you told him to protect the NOM and, and he did not leave his side the entire time, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, and that's that that says a lot, especially considering all the death and carnage that you all have encountered over the last, you know, seven to ten days. Yeah, that's um, been a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so um, the rest of the conversation is pretty, or the rest of the day leading into the rest of the afternoon, leading back into Victor's kind of silent, right? Little conversations here or there, you know, where are you going to go first for dinner? You know, stuff that, that slowly starts to come out of conversation as you get further and further away from the manor, as life kind of feels a little bit more normal, right? Even though you've got this big foreboding shadow over you, you're coming into familiar ground. When you come back into Victa, it's right around sunset. It's not too late, right? Sunset's around 6.30, 7 o'clock at this time, maybe a little bit later, um, as you understand it, obviously. Where, yeah. What's the first thing that, that Dmitriev does? What, what does he do when he, when he gets back into Victa, when he's actually able to, of course, he's going to you know dust off his leathers and, and make sure that everything's okay as far as his gear and go back to, you know. What, the more mundane stuff is assumed. What does he do that that's of of note? Um, I mean, like it depended on like the time and stuff. Like, I I want to go and get my hand. I've lost my Hancock, right? So, I want to see if it's yeah. So um, so again, you know, so just for for purposes, you know, most of the businesses in a, in a in a medieval location like this, they live in them as well. Yeah, and I, not that they're twenty four hours like you could go there at two a.m. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. for dire emergency, you could. They're gonna take you know until basically bedtime, ten o'clock, ten thirty. They're gonna take visitors because it could mean business. Well, yeah. So I would, I would go and sit, search out uh, the blacksmith. Okay, so we remember. So we'll take a little quick harken back, right? We remember. You you had you had searched out or searched for a blacksmith in town, and you had been you'd been turned on to the only elf in the location, um, a, a, a female elf by the name of Miss Miss Pell Tree. And um, when you went there, Pell, she was phenomenal. She was very welcoming, but she kept side eyeing your your beautiful and and we we've we've almost stylized them as 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 Indian type. American Indian type tomahawks, right? Not necessarily hand axes that are made for wielding in by hand, though you can. These are more made and balanced for throwing, and they have um, cords of light taut leather attached to them, very light, that um, that you then utilize to retrieve. And she was really taken aback by this, never seeing a weapon like that before, right? Um, or at least not of the quality that you have. And you took her out back and you threw one or two at a target, showed her how it's utilized. And she asked if she could keep one of them to create um, to create a form, if you will, uh, for the means of recreating them. Right? And yeah. you agreed to leave one with her. And so you walk back up to the front of the blacksmiths and I'm assuming you, I'm assuming you knock and, and you hear Pell's familiar voice and sign. Come on in. Yeah, so... Uh, <clears throat> greetings, good evening. Um, sorry it's late. Um, I hope you... Uh, are, are you finished? Are you finished with my Hancocks? So she, so the minute she sees your face, her eyes light up, right? And, and from, a, from a position of, of, of knowledge, not like, you know, she's falling for you, not that type of light up. They light up like, oh, here's the guy who brought me, you know, this... this this new item that I'd never seen before. And she grabs you by the forearm and drags you in. And she's, and then she sees behind you, Elon, and she goes, you too, come on. And she pulls you in back where the, where the, um, uh, where the, where the, the Smith's area is, where the, um, uh, oh God, the bellows and all of that are in back. Right. Yeah. And she pulls out this, uh, this near pristine and perfect form for your Hancock. And she pulls your Hancock out. She's untied the, the rope from it, the, the, the leather. Um, and it is, it is um, coiled very meticulously and placed in uh, very nicely. She's taken very good care. And she pulls this form out, right? And it's, it's a top and bottom, like two pieces that go together. And it's got a leather strap around it. And there's a spot in the top where you would pour the molten metal, whatever you would use. And, um, and, and there's her form. And she opens the form up and she places the head. She's, 
She's taken the head of the Hancock off of the wooden shaft and she places it inside and she puts the top on, fastens the leather down and in a very proud act, slightly shakes it in several directions, showing you that there is a literally no gap inside. She has a perfect form of your Hancock. Wow. Yeah, That's this took days to make, right? I mean, she sat down. She's she's obviously put aside other work. Um, and she's just, she's very proud of this. And she goes, I have never put in such work for something like this ever. And it, I am just, I couldn't be more proud. And she re-undoes the leather strap, opens the form, pulls the Hancock back out, and then walks you over to her workbench slowly reattaches it with the um with the cross bolts in it and everything and reties the knot in the exact you can see she undid and redid your knot three or four times to make sure she knotted it perfectly and she hands the handcock back to you and she goes thank you so much no no bother at all no problem at all um do you think you can make me one? I'm in need of one more. <laughs> oh, I can definitely. So then she goes, oh, this is okay. And with the minute you say that, she spins and she goes over back to the table. And you see on the table the head of another Hancock. Oh, and she said, I just, for, I just um, formed one last night, though it is not completed. Um, my intention was to and she goes over to a to a chest in the in, in the side of her blacksmith's area and she pops open it, it's beautifully carven elven runes across it it's just an amazing work of art in and of itself and you're amazed at first of all how clean it is in a blacksmith shop second of all how it's undamaged like no dents no dings either it's tremendously tremendously hard wood or it is tremendously cared for or both, right? Seeing her standards, you are, you're not surprised, right? So, and she opens it and from it, she pulls um, a two foot length of this near perfect wooden dowel shaft, about three inches around and about two feet long. And then she recloses the, um, the, the, um, the chest relatches. It doesn't lock it. It doesn't have a lock on it. It just has a simple latch and she walks it back over to where the mold is and she invites you over and she looks over at Elin and says, you as well. And you walk over and she, she pulls, she puts this piece of wood down on a sheep skin. And she said, this is from this is a piece of wood from my homeland. I only traveled with a certain amount of these. If, if, if you will allow me to, to make copies of this and we can agree upon a percentage split for any that I sell, I will craft you two more of these using these as, as the wood for the Hancock. And then she lifts it. It's it's very reverent, right? It's not like a religious thing. It's just this has meaning to her. And she lifts the piece of wood and she hands it to you. I mean, that is that <clears throat> that would be absolutely amazing, and I, I have no problem. I, I mean, the weapon is is something that should be shared, and it's a skill. It's almost like an art, you know. It's it's something that. It. So, so you know wood, Dimmy. That's a bad way to put it, but from, <laughs> from your from your from your days as a, as a, as a tree feller, from your days, you know, um, riding through many of the of the forests and um, and tree stands in and around um, uh, your area of birth. Give me, um, uh, give me a uh, let's call it a perception. Let me, yeah, let's call it a perception check, and but give it to me with advantage. <laughs> okay, so no, and that's fine. That's fine. So you look a little quizzically at the piece of wood. Now, 
The wood in your hands is light, lighter than light, right? But very sturdy. And she kind of looks at you and then she shakes her head a little bit. And she says, I'm so sorry. I, sometimes I make the assumption that everybody knows what I know. She said, this is a piece of you wood. And instantly in your head, it clicks. You know what you wood is. You wood is one of the most, is one of the most sought after wood from the elven communities of the East for all manners of uh, formation of weapons and or uh, decorative pieces for lords, ladies, whatever it may be. So the finest elven bows are crafted from this yew wood. The finest elven axes, the hafts are crafted from this yew wood. Um, the finest elven batons for their, their lords and ladies and rulers are crafted from this yew wood. For her to have any one piece, let alone several that you've seen in there, is amazing. Simply because it doesn't come west very often. It's highly sought after, though only the individuals who know what it is would know how highly sought after it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you're, the wood crafters of this area, the weaponsmiths, wouldn't even... They would treat it like any other piece of wood. And they wouldn't... And not that they wouldn't do it justice, but they wouldn't... Um, it would not... It would not have the same benefits as a weapon as if it were crafted by someone who knows how to craft a weapon out of you would. So you immediately, now knowing what it is, you know instantly that this is this is not only an amazing honor and an amazing gift, but this is going to be one hell of a weapon. Sounds good. It sounds awesome. And uh, yeah, by all means, it's a great honor for this gift, and I appreciate it. And you can do what, what you glorious. like. Obviously, no, I won't can, give in. You can, you can make as many I'm of these victorious. as you like. And I will defend. So she, so immediately, she, you know, she, she exhales softly. Hi, She's like, okay, oh, thank you, great, excellent. Like she really wants this, right? She wants to make these weapons. Um, perfect. Return. I already have. The forms are the easy part. It's the shafts, it's the halves that are going to be the harder part. I'll need at least two days, one day each, to carve these correctly, to balance these correctly. And I've got I've got leather cord that I think would work perfectly for this as well, so we don't have to worry about that. In two days' time, I will have weapons for you that are amazing. In the meantime, she returns you your Hancock. She's got the form. She's got the measurements she needs. She's got everything that she needs. And you can tell by that one uh, piece of yew wood that um, she can make two shafts or hafts of um, your hand axes, your handcocks with that. You also notice that or think or come to the conclusion that maybe it just peeks in the back of your head. This would make an amazing haft, amazing um, for your for your wood axe as well, if ever the opportunity arise, ariz, arose, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I came here for in the first place was uh, as an axe. <laughs> so, um, I would say, like, can you, like, could you do me one more favor, um, and? I would like to use that wood for my my axe. So she looks at it and she so this so she's I don't want to say that she's insulted because that's not the right word. But I don't think she was anticipating that question because these hold right it's 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 almost like when you go to your son right and you say you know, he's got three chocolate chip cookies and they're the best damn cookies he's ever had. And he gave you one and you say, man, can I have another one? Right. And he doesn't want to, mm. he doesn't want to disappoint you. Right. But he's like, but I've only got two left. It's that type of a thing. Right. It's not a, it's not a selfish thing. It's not, you know, and you, you, you think maybe five or six pieces from your glance into, aside from the one that she's, she's offering you. 
So she's got maybe six or seven total pieces of this. Okay. Um, and again, so she doesn't, she, she, she just kind of, you can see her thinking it over deeply. I mean, would you want payment? Like I can, I can, we can work something out. It's, it's like. So again, she kind of, so give me a, um, give me a history check, Dimmy, please. I want to see if you put two and two together here. History. It's like fifth or sixth down from the top. Okay. Nope. So you're just having an average day, right? <laughs> so, um, I can't believe I'm not rolling above average dice. <laughs> <laughs> you're having an average day. So your knowledge, so there, there's not a lot known about the elven people's in these lands you know them you've seen them not against you or with you in battle but as you've moved around territories you've come across a couple of units of them a single one here a minstrel or a bard there a wizard here whatever right yeah you know that elves are tremendously um they they they, they thrive on their histories and tokens of the homeland right Things that come with them stay with them. Family heirlooms pass all the way down, right? It's it, things like that occur. This is very near and dear to her. This would, this is not you. This is usually something offered, not something asked for. Though uh, I don't, I want to stress you have not insulted her. You don't feel that in any way. Why? I mean, I, I'm I'm just admiring the. I I I will just say look. Um, like it, it, it just, just think about it. Um, thank you very much for what you've done with the Hancocks. I think they're amazing, and it's a, it's a great gift. I very much appreciate it. Um, yeah, and you see her face kind of return to that lighted up look again, like uh, not as not as big as it was before because that was when she had initially realized, oh my god, he's back, and I get to show him what I've done. Yeah, but again, like I said, you haven't insulted her. It's just this is something that's very near and dear to her and her people. Yeah, and I, I can appreciate that as well. I, I can appreciate that because it is a mighty fine piece of wood. So, you know, it's... Uh... So you retrieve one of your Hancocks. You've got one of the two. The other one is at the bottom of a bloody pit somewhere, maybe. <laughs> right? So we've got at least one of them back, which is a good thing. And then, yes, and in two days' time... And then, Demi, what I'll tell you is um, what she's going to return you because they will be expertly weighted. Um, they will become a plus one weapon for both attack and damage and a plus one to retrieval. So your retrieval now is an 11 plus, not a 12 plus. Mm. And then you'll gain, you'll gain the plus one on the attack and the plus one on the damage. And um, furthermore... They will also, because of their 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 amazing balance and sharpness, they will ignore um, they will ignore uh, your opponent's abilities to um, to take half damage on slashing weapons. Ooh! So if they if they have the ability to if they have a damage resistance to slashing, you will ignore that with those. Now we're talking. Yeah, but of course, you don't know that until you until you receive them. But I'm I'm just telling you that here and now, so you know what what's actually being made for you. So you will at that point have three Hancocks, right? You'll have your your two new ones, and then you'll have uh, trusty old Betsy there that you'll you will keep somewhere. <laughs> Betsy, <laughs> you know, and run from there. Is there is there anything else that you would um, want to discuss or? Uh, with tree. Um... No, like obviously I'm in the market for like a an axe or something like that, but I'm I'm, I'm more than satisfied with the Hancocks. I think they're going to be a, an amazing addition. Um, yep. So so her weapons, um, her um, shields. She doesn't have. She has a few breastplates around, but she doesn't have anything further than that. She hasn't gone into, or she may have the talent for it. But she hasn't gone into anything from the standpoint of like full plate or half plate 
There are some pauldrons. There are some gauntlets. Um, they tend to be, I don't want to call them undersized, but you're used to more girth in your armors, right? And seeing in your, right? More human type armors, more dwarven type armors, more, you know, things like that. Elven craft, as you have noticed, tends to be more sleek, tends to be more, um, it, I don't, I don't want to say aerodynamic because it's not going to make you, you faster. You're but you're saying get the, I'm get the too gist. fat. You're saying I'm too fat for elven armor, aren't you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm saying it. that that like so, elven, elven shoulder. I'm sorry, um, human shoulder plates would hmm. be made to stop big items, right? So they're yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah, I get elven it. shoulder plates would still stop those big items, but they would use it more to glance it off. Yeah, versus yeah, yeah. absorbing the blow. Yeah, I see. Right, it's it's almost like a a maybe a half or a full step forward in technology, if you will. Yeah, so and you also good. realize it's probably as a result going to be lighter as well, which would mean less of a detriment to uh, movement. I mean, like, how much does that cost, though? That's the thing, isn't it? So, like, what sort of? Okay, so is that a conversation you're having? I mean, what are you so? Okay, yeah. So because how... these are also so this is another thing. So in my in my Dungeons and Dragons universes, right? <clears throat> right. It's very easy to make a leather jerkin, right? So have you ever, have you ever been to a tailor in real life, Dim, where they just they take your measurements and and then yeah, yeah. they pull something off the thing and then they barely have to adjust it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Armor is different, right? You can wear somebody else's armor, but it's not going to be made for you. Armor is 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 plates. It's measurements. It's it's crafted to your body to a point, right? So like a, a gnomish plate mail armor would be dramatically different than a human plate mail armor. So this is not something where you would like walk in the door and say she has samples more than anything. Right, I see. So you have to order it and then wait on it. I mean, it's definitely got to be something worth considering anyway, because it's going to... Absolutely. I mean, it's, it it peaks like, your eye. It's beautiful work. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to say, I I really like the uh, the breastplate you got there. Is there any danger of <laughs> acquiring one myself for me? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to insult you by asking you about that? <laughs> no, So so instantly, like... Her, 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 she, so the minute you say the breastplate, right, she kind of goes into, I don't want to say salesperson's mode. She goes back into blacksmith's mode. Let's say that. So, but, but before she does, she reaches down, she's got the piece of you wood and she takes the, 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 the lamb skin and rolls it over the top to protect it. Right. And she carefully places the form down next to that. And she carefully places the one blade that she's already forged. And she and she um, and then she kind of turns towards you. She, there's a lot of pride in her work, right? Um, and she goes over to the breastplate and she pulls it off of the off of the wall. And she said, "Yes, this is you know I, I, I've done some work for Kalon. I've done some work for um, uh, the Lord of Reckless. I've done some work for several individuals. Uh, it's definitely something that I'd be more than interested in. I, I, I have enough metal to craft one if you choose." Um, what did you have in mind? Is, is are you looking simply for a breastplate, or? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So, um, a breastplate would be a good start. Um, I may require more stuff from you in the future, but for now, I think a breastplate would be perfect. Okay. So she she turns around again and, and goes again to a small leather bound um, roll up. Like a like a like a, a a tool belt, but it's been rolled up, right? So almost like a, a a mechanic set of wrenches. You know how you they have them in that thing, and then they roll them up and they velcro them together. It's the same thing, but it's um it's got a leather tie. She unties it, rolls it out onto a table, and pulls out a length of um, leather cord that is notched not notched but knotted approximately what you would say, what you would assume to be about every two to, to three inches. And she's got a set of scissors in there. She's got a set of, uh, there's several blades in there, very, very sharp blades, all kinds of stuff. And she asks you, she, and she, she, she bids you to come over to her. And she, um, and then she tells you, remove, remove um, anything on your upper body there. 
which you do, right? Um, we'll assume that you've, you know, taken a small bath and all that. We're not going to get into like you're all still covered in blood and grime. Um, and she proceeds to take measurements of you in several locations around your waist, where your lower rib cage is, where your upper rib cage is underneath your, um, your arms. She has you raise your arms in front, out to the side, above you. She measures your neck. She measures the, 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 your back from shoulder blade to shoulder blade, down your spine. She then s- turns you sideways, goes back over to her kit, and she comes out with a length of, um, of very interesting looking chain. But this chain is somewhat rigid, right? They're like, they're like sections of, um, f- not flanges, but it's, it's basically a chain, but that you can shape into a form, right? And it's currently straight. She holds one to the top of your neck and one to the, uh, to the base of your spine, and she forms it to your back, to your spinal column. And as she pulls it away, you can see that she has formed what your spinal column looks like in the back. The, the, the degrees and the angles. And she goes and she puts that back down. And she says, well, the, the Hancocks are my first, are, 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 are the first thing that I want to get done with you as I've promised you those as gift and payment. Um, additional, additional three days time and I could have you a breastplate made. Do you prefer full breastplate front and back? Do you prefer leather back? Do you prefer chain back? Uh, I'd probably go with <clears throat> um, leather back, um, just because chain is probably too noisy, right? So yeah, like full front or and then leather back. Okay, so she looks at, she looks back and she 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 starts to look um, um, she starts to look at her leather. You know, she pulls out some leathers and then she hands them to you, and she says, "Do you prefer?" rigid and she's got a very stern very very strong leather she's got a softer leather and then she's got one that is that is i mean it's it's soft as silk to the touch okay. so basically you've got comfort all the way up to protection i kind of want to go like i mean obviously protection is the whole point um but I also want to be able to move around you know like movement is so i don't want to be like oh, if i go somewhere in between um, yeah, and there's there's those offerings. So so you would assume that the the comfort is made for, um, you know, formal displays, right? I wear yeah, this yeah. when the king is going to give me the medal. Yeah. And then you've got and and basically the other two are the choices of of either firm or or a little less firm. Yeah, a little only slightly less, like because I I just want to be a bit more mo- like obviously being an X man. Like, I need to move my arms and quite often round them behind my head, you know. <laughs> so, like, as the swinging motion is, so I, I need movement in my back, if that makes sense. No, no, definitely. And that's 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 fair enough, without a doubt. So she, she looks at it and she looks at all of your measurements and she just verifies. She goes, yeah, I think another three to four days I could have this crafted for you. And she says... Two hundred gold sound fair. One eighty. Okay, give me give me a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, we've done some business together. No, I know that's why I'm giving you the right? advantage here. Uh, so, percep? Did you say perception or no? No, per- uh, persuasion. Oh, persuasion. You say with advantage. With advantage. Oh my god! <laughs> you got <laughs> data dice, man. One <laughs> ninety. Oh man. <clears throat> so what? she looks and she looks back at the Hancocks and she says, "I, I, is is as hard as it is to ask of you, considering the honors you've already done me." I, I still have to maintain my business. 190. That is more than fair. I, I, I'm sorry that I was cheeky enough to ask for a discount. It's just we are in a very sticky situation. 
Um, I gotta get this stuff sorted, and then I won't forget this. I'll remember this, and I'll 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 put this I'll put this right again in the future. But thank you very much. It's massively appreciated, and uh, the Hancocks are absolutely amazing as well. Yeah, so she's, I mean, you're building a friendship here, obviously, right? So um, so at that point, you know, forgive me, but if I'm going to get work on all this, I need to get to work on it right now. Is there anything else that I can do for you? I don't mean to rush you out if, you, if there is more that you need. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's absolutely, that is more, that is everything that I needed. And thank you again. Good day to you. And uh, I shall see you in a few days. Bye. Perfect. So she has said that the Hancocks will take two and that the um, that the armor will take an additional four. Yes. So, yeah, that's that'll be two. So that'll be six. You're already one and a half out. So you're coming down to crunch time there. Well, now I need to find out how to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, the, that's the next. You just, so, so, so remind us how many gold pieces you currently have. Uh, not that many. Not that many. Uh, so... I'm going to have to take out a loan somewhere, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it says 20 on my sheet, but I'm pretty sure it's more than that. I'm going to have to you've go You've got the 20 on your sheet. Yeah. You've got you've got a portion that DACA is squirreled oh, we, away for you. We put some in the bank, didn't we? we put some it, in yeah, the bank. you've got the stuff that you've got in the bank. Um, I will... I have not... You do have some more because I have not worked up um, what you pulled off of the dead bodies... As you were going back, as we did agree, you would be going back to do that, right? You would have, you guys would have searched them for other cultist documents, things. It's not like you would have just gone back and said, where's the friggin' gold, right? You would have been searching for everything. So there will be some more added on to that. Um, and then there is the matter of you guys have not obviously looted the temple yet because Night Demon scared, the, scared you out of the place, right? This is an out of character question, but <clears throat> this, so... Is Night Demon just living there now, then? Or is he well, only... we don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. So, from from your... And that's fine if you ask these questions. I don't mind this kind of stuff, especially out of character. So, from your interaction and remembering the conversation, he did not show up until, until Molaram yeah. invoked his name and summoned his... Remember, he said, one of my greatest pets. Yeah. So, Molaram... I remember that, he, yeah. He fucked with the wrong guy. Basically, is what happened, and you just happen to be standing there. <laughs> so there's a good chance that when this is all said and done, that he goes back to wherever he came from, wherever that may be. But so now you also remember the part <clears> of the <throat> conversation where he said, "We've been away for too long." I, you know, we obviously uh, I shouldn't okay. say that. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. we've been ignoring you for too long. Is the way that he put it. So the question then becomes, what in the hell was he doing in that millennia of time, right? Yep. So there, those, there, there are those questions out there. Um, is he living there? You didn't stick around to find out, right? I mean, he's like, okay, you know, you guys have 10 days. I'll see you when I see you. By the way, Elliot, if you ever want to just return for a quick conversation, here's a ring that you can touch. And well, you know, and he really did enjoy their conversation. And then Elliot did ask, "Does that mean my compatriots as well?" And he said, "Yes." Oh, what like to have a conversation with Night Demon? Yeah, he so he did say that you know, feel free to bring them back as well. I also made mention that currently, of knowledge, the only people who know there are. Seven man servants who know about the catacombs, plus whom you've discussed it with. There's only five people who know about the temple below the catacombs. Your party in Elon. Ooh. So you have not disclosed to anybody as of yet that there is a temple down there. I mean, we've got to oh. be able to find out. Like, the. the... <sighs> Because obviously it's got to predate the mansion, right? And then how long's the mansion been there? So according to Elliot's notes, I want to say, and I've got to go back and look at my notes because I don't remember yeah. all this perfectly. I want to say it was 10 years since the disappearances. I want to say 30 years it predates you. 
from coming to Victa, I mean? Well, the mansion. Because I think we had, I think I wrote 20 years of history for Elliot. Uh, okay. Then Laura completely fell off the face of the earth, or face of the planet. Ten years later, the cousins show up claiming their right to the to the uh, location, and then we find ourselves here today. All right. Yeah. I mean, well, to be fair, like I say, it's just getting my um, stuff in a check and everything. Like, I guess I'm leveled up. I don't, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable speaking to Night Demon by myself, really. Like, I don't know what I'd really want to say to him or anything. Like, I, well, I, well, for the conversation, you would have to accompany Elliot. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so Elliot's cool. the one with the ring. Yeah, he yeah. could ostensibly get the four of you together, five of you if Elon's there, or just two of you, or whatever. Theoretically, the the because all he never really said how you get back there, your friends, but he did say no, they're welcome as well. So you're just assuming that if Elliot touches that ring, whoever Elliot wants to take with him is going to go with him for that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But, I mean, like, to be fair, I don't think there's much else that I really want to get done. I mean, <clears throat> I think I've still got health potion from before. So I don't really... I, You know what? I don't really like um, the country wizards. <laughs> Um, I don't trust him. You're not too him. keen on him? I just don't trust him. I don't know, because, like, he seems to be doing stuff with Flagel Snap and being very... Like, he just seems secretive, and again, like, it's just the way wizards come across, right? Wizards always come across a bit smug and, like, you know, they're not my kind of people being a warrior. Like That's wizard, very fair. Like, they're... they're I, I'm not very trusting of, like, that sort of character, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think I've got stuff. I've got, yeah, I've got a potion of healing and stuff. I've got some stuff. That, I've still got the stuff that we got from Kalon as well. And I don't, I mean, like, I don't really want to have this conversation with Kalon or anyone like that about the demon, uh, prince or the night demon without knowing what Daka and Eliod and Flagel want to really do. You know, I think that's more of a. Yep, and that's and that's fair. And and, and one of the things I spoke to, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I spoke to Daka, I'm sorry, to um, Flargle about was kind of when you walked into the town, right? There was this, there was this big exhale, right? We're back, God. Yeah. I mean, we, I can't believe we made it out, you know, yada yada yada. You probably would have exchanged some small pleasantries, and then literally all four of you split off in your own direction with Elon following you, right? Because you've all got your own things to kind of do, you know. Um, Elliot, being <laughs> being the broken gnome that he is, Elliot probably goes straight to the rowdy gnome for a, for a glass of wine, right? Like instantly, like to 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 drown drown his sorrows, if you will. You know, it's, it's just to go somewhere and just decompress. We figured Flargle Snarp, which he did, would have gone straight to the country wizards, which you would have known where he was going by the route that he took, right? You know that there's some relationship yeah. there. You know that the country wizard sent him for that mirror, or at least gave him knowledge of it. And then we know, or we think that Daka probably goes to Kalon's to report on what he was charged with, right? As, as a gray would do. He was charged by the local magistrate to seek out and investigate this situation. There's payment in his, in his um, safety deposit box, box at the Rothwell house already made and he would want to fulfill that portion of the agreement. What he says to, 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 to Kalon is a totally different conversation, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I mean, I, I'd ask Elon if there's anything that he needs of me or, like while we're staying here for a while, if there was so anything what, what do you do? so let me ask you this though what what do you think that you and Elon would do with the seven manservants who are currently in, in uh, the... housed at the Rowdy Gnome? Well, I, I I would think that they're gonna head back with us when we head back to uh, Night Demon. 
So would, would you, do you really think, I mean, and, and, and so you, you, so the purpose to go back to the manor is to go meet with an old God, ostensibly make a decision ostensibly and hopefully get out alive. Would you take the seven man servants who are, uh, I mean, we're talking three hit point guys who have never seen combat. Elon's different. All right. I mean, I'm not, I, don't, I didn't mean, yeah, I didn't mean we're going to take him into the temple. No, like, no, I know, I know like, that, but I mean, would you have even taken him to the manor? Maybe not, yeah, maybe not. I guess, I guess that, I, I mean, like, the thing is, is if they're okay at the, uh, at the inn, then that's fine. I mean, I feel like if, if we, if we save one of the daughters or anything like that, then obviously they can go back to the mansion. Like, well, we need to, we need to find out what the night demon's doing first, right? Like, because if the night demon is living in that temple, <laughs> like, <laughs> right, yeah, that's like, true. Then, uh, then yeah, I don't think anyone's going back to that mansion, right? Um, and that's the thing is as well is like, we need to know what his intentions are because at the end of the day, we got to warn people that he's there, right? But I don't want to like warn people now because it could cause like panic, you know. So yeah, that's or, the other side of things, right? Because remember, Kalon had said to you guys specifically. You don't want to see what happens when a town goes to pitchforks and torches. Yeah. Which is why I'm sending you four to, to kind it, of do yeah. this covertly, right? Because if, if you know how many people, if, if they found out that there was, and and they don't even know what an you know a, an old god is, you have no clue what an old god is. No. no. There is no. You have no historical reference. You have no religious reference. Nothing, right? I just saw what he did to Moloran, that's it. Bro. Exactly. Now imagine that you've got a town that is a day and a half away from that location and you kind of, and, and word starts to spread about that guy is down living in the, I mean, what, probably half the town moves out in the next week, right? Goes for greener pastures. Yeah. And then yeah. those who have a vested interest in the town probably get pitchforks and torches and try to figure things out themselves. <laughs> Well, good luck. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. You end up with a whole bunch of blood splatter. So that's why Kalon sent you in the manner that he sent you. Yeah, and like having seen what I've seen, I, I just, yeah, I don't really want to. Like, we we need to find out what his intentions are, if he's going anywhere. Because the way I see it is we're not, we're not going to defeat him, not yet. Like, not, like, I mean, if ever, you know, he's a god. Like, so, um... We need maybe to appease him or give him something that he wants. I don't know, like, what does a god want? Like, I guess we got to find out all these questions and then go from there. No, very fair. Um, okay, so open up your character sheet there real quick. Yep. So um, if you go to Features, the yep. Features tab, and then you'll see where it says Fighter Level 4 with, like, a little drop down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So drop that down to level five, and then it's uh, gonna it's gonna go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. It's gonna prompt you to roll your die for hit points. So I want I want you to remember that in order to roll for hit points, the way that I do it is you have to beat at least one up from half. Six. So you roll a ten sided die. So that means you either roll a seven, eight, nine, or ten for your hit points. Well, this is it, because I've rolled so terribly, this is clearly going to be a 10. I got a 9! Okay, so we'll take that. So there's your hit points, your 9. Perfect. So what do I do? Just add them to my current ones. No, you should. Did you, did you, um, uh, did, what's the next prompt? It should say, like, a next or something, or Oh, done. yeah, it's next. Yeah, there we go. And now it's come up with features, extra attack, fighter, and then complete, per yeah? Per yep, then hit complete. So... Now, so yeah, now this it's is, added. So, go ahead. It's uh, it's added hit points. It actually added yep. more than nine. It I, added I everything. Get, I get an extra three or something. Yeah. Okay, so now here's here's the interesting thing about this. So, Dimitri, <clears throat> you were talking about or, or Dimitri, Dimmy, you were <laughs> talking about how you know. Remember last adventure? You were like, oh man, I don't do enough damage. I don't, you just crossed over into two attacks a turn. Two attacks a turn. Oh, yeah, baby. with superiority die, and your your um, your granted ability of the Hancock as a bonus attack. Yes. Oh, so, what is that? okay. What does that mean? <laughs> bonus action. So you remember how you could strike your axe and then you could use your Hancock when you're when you're as a as your superiority die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you've got some, you're, you're, you're now crossing over. So it's, it's funny, right? Daka's character was, and again, I don't want to make it sound like he min max out of it just to do that. He just chose a very specific role that allowed him to do a lot of damage early. You're now yeah. going to start catching up to him. Cool. Now he's going to get two attacks as well, but you've seen what happens when he misses. Well, yeah, he nearly shot me in the As back you start to get like level five, six, seven, eight, things start to balance out more. Okay. Um, Dadle, I don't know if you watched Dadle earlier. He took the fireball spell. I mean, that, we're going to start, you're going to see Elliot's going to pick some spells. You're now going to start seeing that the party is going to balance out a little bit more in that combat area and combat range. Um, also, I think you're really going to like how that Hancock is going to help you in certain combats as well with your ability to bust through slashing resistances, things like that. Yeah, cool, cool. I mean, I was always happy anyway. I, I was, oh, always, I, know. I, I was just a faraway moan, like you know. But uh. but it's it. But you know, when when you when you're starting to look at things like armor types, which is great. You're starting to look at you know this is this is where you're going to start to your you all of your roles are going to start to kind of flesh out some more. Yeah. But again, I I always urge you, you know, keep role playing like you do. You guys are doing fantastic, man. I'm having a blast. Yeah, nice one, Jetpool. Do you yeah. have so? Is there anything else that Dmitriov would do, and anything minor? Um, would he would he visit with Elon anymore? Would he anything else that would would go on before you guys kind of rally again? And we'll say that like next week comes like maybe two days later, like where everybody kind of you know decompresses for I mean, a couple of days in Victa. We'd obviously go for a beer. <laughs> obviously, you definitely could. Yeah, I yeah. mean maybe 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 the next roundabout, you all meet in the quad skull and we bust that map out. You know. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like, I obviously need to rest as well because I'm still five hit points missing or whatever. But I'm assuming. Well, yeah, we're, when we start yeah. next episode, everybody's gonna be a be a a, a long rest and straight into yeah. it. Yeah, I've got I've got a weapon coming. I've got armor coming. I've leveled up. Like, um, yeah, uh, I maybe maybe try and figure out some ways to make some money as well. Like, cause that's the thing is this <clears throat> this like we we're gonna need, I, I feel like money's gonna be important soon. So. But yeah, um, as far as we're concerned, I think it's good. Excellent. Well, great. Um, so, is there anything um, would do? What would if you could list maybe two goals of Dmitriov that don't directly they can they can roundabout, but don't directly relate to Night Demon him him himself. What would those be? What is Dmitriov trying to do over the next ten days? Even including, like we know you're going to deal with 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 Night Demon at least in the form of a conversation to start. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really know to be fair. I want to make sure Elon's all right. I want to make sure that the staff for the mansion are good. Um, obviously, I've like I'm a like a soldier, right? I'm a I'm sort of like a leader role. So I just want to make sure that like all these guys are good as well, like Daka and Flagel and like especially Elliot as well. I want to make sure he's good because he's been through it all, the turmoil and the what what have you. So I just want to make sure everyone's good, everyone's rested, everyone's thinking clearly. Okay, so and, you know. so we're going to assume. So just so you know, out of character, kind of what I'm looking at, we're going to assume for right now that Elon and the seven manservants are your charges. Right. Okay. So yeah, you, you're 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 taking them as your responsibility. Simply because a nobody else will yet, unless you have discussions. Maybe somebody else will. Cheers. But but B, there's just <laughs> that, there's, else, that, um... there's that soldierly manner of you that these seven people come with Elon, and Elon right now is my charge. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. I just make sure they're comfortable and bedded down in the uh, gnome, the rowdy gnome, or whatever it is, and. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I don't really have too many goals. Like, my main goal was get the weapon, like, get the Hancock sorted. And, uh, like, bonus, got armor coming on the way as well. Um, so I'm happy with that. And, um, like I say, like, I, like my my whole mindset is this thing, getting this thing resolved and then thinking about, like, because I'm going to need to make some money at some point as well. So. Um, <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> you come back for it. I don't have it. <laughs> I know. This is it. This is it. So I'm gonna. Oh, have you, to... know, you 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 made an agreement for 190 gold, and you have like 
20. 40 right now or something? Yeah. I mean, like, that's how I used to that's how I used to roll when I was a kid. You know? like... <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that, right? No, uh... there, and there's honestly because you know when you see craftsmanship like that, and you're like, dude, I have to have this. I've got to make this happen. Um... Yeah. Because I've seen what's going on in this area, right? Don't you have D and D credit cards? I mean, come on. Like. <laughs> Curiously enough, the yeah. Rothwell House does give loans. There you go. There you go. So, and I mean, it might be worth it because it it will either save my life that armor, or if I die, I won't be able to pay it back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow! wow. Oh. So, it's, you know, That's so win, brilliant. Win-win. win-win. <laughs> well, thank you, Dimmy. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it's a good one, mate. Thank you very much. It's good. It's good to kind of get a little bit more background into who Dimitriov is a little bit. So as, as I try to kind of weave him, you know, into, you know, what what because he's starting to develop more, right? Before he was just this woodsman who kind of was a fighter and you're like, okay, be rolling to Victor. What are we doing, right? And now we're starting to see that he definitely has a history of honor and duty and even though he's even though he's a civilian he still immediately goes back to that when he sees the honorable in need right yeah yeah for sure for sure so you know and he's building his own relationships in the town which is good as well i mean you know uh, pell is not gonna if daca was to walk in and ask pell for that same breastplate it may be twice the price we don't know I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll sell it to him. <laughs> well, that's how he's going to make his cash, right? Hey, Daka, have a look at this press paint. <laughs> <laughs> Dimmy opens up his jacket. 400 you gold. <laughs> 400 gold. D do you accept scimitars? <laughs> do you accept scimitars? How many scimitars? <laughs> How many scimitars for that? 7,694. <laughs> Approximately how many is collected over the 12 sessions we've had. <laughs> Glorious. Br brilliantly done, Dimmy. Thank you for joining me for this little one-on-one. -on -one. I, I like to do these, just so you know, I like to do these around every 11, 12, 15 sessions because things can kind of go a little bit awry from a standpoint of how is my character developing? And we just kind of bring it back on the tracks that way, right? Yeah, yeah. Because ultimately you do have to do, there are things that you're going to do alone. Yeah. So expect <laughs> this every now and then. Don't role play them. Yeah. What'd you say? What'd you say <laughs> Don't role play them. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna duck off. Excuse me, boys, while I go roll a 20 on this one. <laughs> All right, ciao. ciao. Oh, thank you very much, Dimmy. Thank you very much, Jack Bull. Absolutely glorious. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.